Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Sunday, August 4th. Looking at the fire potential impacts for the next few days, you can still see smoke lingering over northern areas, downwind, and in areas of wildfires. Otherwise, lightning today will be most active over the eastern half of the Great Basin. We have had some lightning this morning over parts of southern and central Idaho, and that will start moving eastward through the day but still some remnant moisture back in Nevada today for some isolated thunderstorms in eastern Nevada and couldn't, couldn't roll out some in western Nevada as well. As we move into Monday, drier and breezy air moves into western areas of the Great Basin, so we will see an increase in winds with a drop in relative humidity, and this will also continue on Tuesday and spread further north. Otherwise, thunderstorms will gradually push eastward. Over the last 24 hours, we have had quite a bit of lightning, especially across Utah, and into northern and northeast Nevada, also along the Sierra Front in western Nevada, and up into Idaho, especially earlier this morning and overnight. Precipitation was very spotty across Idaho and Nevada. Most areas only saw a few hundredths of an inch, if that. There were some reports of over a tenth of an inch out in western Nevada. However, much of the rainfall was associated with this lightning in Utah. Some areas still only saw a few hundredths of an inch, but there were many more reports of over a tenth or over a quarter of an inch with these thunderstorms. Yesterday, there was a reported 36 fires for 719 acres and a growth on our large fires over 3,000 acres. You can see the most recent fires in red showing across many areas of Utah and Nevada, especially where we saw that lightning. And then we do have a new and emerging larger fire over parts of southern Idaho. Otherwise, over the last seven to 14 days, the last seven to, four, the last seven to days has been very dry over parts of northwest and southern Nevada and parts of Utah not including the thunderstorms we saw yesterday. And over the last 14 days, really only central areas of the Great Basin and along parts of the Sierra Front and central Idaho saw the above normal precipitation. But definitely still some drier spots around the Great Basin, especially the periphery over the last one to two weeks. And the ERC point map shows that well with the highest ERCs, percentiles at least, over the periphery of the Great Basin with lower values over central areas. Currently, some of our ERC charts, top right over western Wyoming, where we do have a large fire. ERCs are approaching the 90th percentile, but we'll see some decrease in the coming days with moisture moving through. Also over southern areas, uh, this is actually for the Sierra Front, and you can see ERCs are gradually climbing. The satellite loop from this morning shows quite a bit of cloud cover over central and eastern Idaho into Utah, and this is where most of our thunderstorm activity will be located. You can still see areas of smoke in Idaho, northern and western Nevada. Also with the clearing we are seeing over in Nevada, again, this is where we still have some moisture in place for some isolated thunderstorms. Otherwise, our smoke impacts today, mainly over northern Nevada up into Idaho, and then decreasing somewhat on Monday. Looking at the weather pattern for later today, again, you can see most of that moisture over the eastern half of the area. A lot of this moisture in central Idaho will allow for thunderstorms mainly this morning, so that accounts for that high risk. But by this afternoon, most of the activity will be located over eastern Idaho, Wyoming, and parts of northeastern Utah, which is where we have our high risk. Otherwise, wetter thunderstorms are more likely over parts of Utah and drier conditions pushing into the west. Relative humidity today drops into the single digits down south, mostly teens other areas with the exception of in Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah, where we will see our thunderstorms, where RH will remain above 20%. Otherwise, winds are definitely increasing over central and eastern Idaho into Wyoming. So we will see westerly or northwesterly wind gusts between 35 and 40 miles per hour, with some areas over eastern Idaho and Wyoming above 45 miles per hour. But you can see the relative humidity is still above 20%, but with the strength of the winds, it's definitely something to pay attention to. Otherwise, further south, generally just gusty outflow winds with any lightning activity, but otherwise light to moderate winds. On Sunday, we will see today those temperatures drop into the mid-90s, so a little bit of cooling as the moisture moves through, and you can see this picture for the uh, thunderstorms for later this afternoon. By tomorrow, we will see drier air continue to push into western Nevada. There's a trough moving into the Pacific Northwest, which will enhance some of the winds over northern California and northwest Nevada tomorrow, so we do have a high risk for the combination of gusty winds and low humidity in northwest Nevada. And otherwise, thunderstorms will likely continue over the eastern half of the Great Basin, but no high risk has been issued for that. Relative humidity will drop somewhat in Idaho, but still remain generally in the teens or above 
You can see more single digits, low teen RHs in Northwest Nevada to a comp with, that is accompanied by those winds gusting around 30, maybe up to 35 miles per hour. Otherwise, gusty outflow winds are expected with the lightning across Idaho and down into Utah. And you can see we could have an uptick in lightning coverage tomorrow in Idaho. So again, we are keeping an eye on that at this point. Temperatures peak back above 100 degrees for Idaho and Utah as that moisture starts to move through. But you can see kind of a reemergence as that trough moves into the Pacific Northwest of an increase in lightning for Monday for Idaho. So again, really watching that for the potential of high risk since many of those areas did not or have not so far seen much rainfall with these current thunderstorms. By Tuesday, high pressure still dominates, keeping moisture down in the south, but still that trough moving by to the north increases winds again in northwest Nevada, uh, possibly into central and southern Idaho, so we did expand our high risk for that. And the relative humidity continues to drop as drier air moves in, more single digits for northern Nevada. You can see the wind picture, wind gusts around 30 miles per hour, maybe 35 for much of northern and western Nevada, but really still remains gusty again over central and eastern Idaho and Wyoming, again with dropping humidity. So still some critical winds, especially following the lightning that we will be seeing the next couple of days. Temperatures still remain hot with values near 100 degrees for our valleys in the north and then 113 for valleys in the south. And thunderstorm picture really starts to dwindle on Tuesday and remains confined to the eastern half of the Great Basin. Three-day precipitation, a really very spotty. Um, we'll see some precipitation in central Idaho and over the mountains of Utah, but again, very spotty with those amounts above a tenth of an inch. As we move into midweek, we will start to see moisture start to push north back up into Utah, much drier conditions for Idaho. And as that trough swings by over northern Rockies, we will see the winds remain gusty across Idaho. So we did add a high risk for Wednesday that aerial coverage of the wind may be a little bit higher, but we'll continue to monitor that as we get a little bit closer. Otherwise, going into Thursday and Friday, we will see additional moisture continue to push north into Utah, so better chances of some wetting rains and decreasing fire potential. Otherwise, drier conditions continue over northern and western area for a prolonged period of time going through next week. Seven-day total precipitation, the only difference from the three-day is in Utah, again, seeing better chances of wetting rains for especially the mountain areas of Utah. So that's definitely welcome news there. And you can see a quite a swath of precipitation on the East Coast associated with uh, what is currently Tropical Storm Debbie. The eight to 14 day outlook uh, looks like a much better picture of what might actually happen towards the middle of the month where the above normal precipitation may be confined really to Utah and Arizona with near normal conditions further west, which would generally be drier for the Western side of the Great Basin. I would anticipate that we might start to see some of that drier trend push up into Idaho as well. That concludes the webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.